Hi, I'm Keith Allen, and I play Murphy on Z Nation, and I listen to One Up Gaming Podcast. Welcome to our podcast. We've got a lot to say about all the latest games you're going to want to play. We'll tell you what's on Xbox, PS3, PC, and more. We'll chat about some random stuff to you rolling on the floor. This is One Up Gaming. Sit back and grab a drink. It's time to give a listen to what we have to think. And we're here with the One Up Gaming Podcast, episode 156. It's me, David. And we've got George. What a time to be alive. That's actually quite good. <laughs> and we've got Chris. What's up, guys? I haven't got anything as clever. <laughs> <laughs> that was better than mine. I was, I'm trying to say something with vibe in it, but I can't think of nothing. What's the vibe in you? I'm feeling a vibe today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just got to let that moment live in infinity. There you go. Yeah, don't, he's getting cut out of the podcast, don't worry. I guess George has been treating himself to a vibe, yeah. and we're making sure this podcast lasts as long as possible just so he can't set it up. God damn it. Yeah, I have to set my room up for it. Oh boy. How long would you guess that it's going to take to set up? I have. It, it could take years. I don't know. <laughs> With my room, it could take months. I don't know. I mean, I think anything could take years if you really procrastinated that long. Yeah. Like, you can, like, like, legit, though. I mean, I could still play, like, sitting down games and standing games. But I want I want to walk around my virtual room and throw hamburgers at people. So if you, if you set it up right, can you actually walk around the room and it'll, like, realize that? Yeah. So, like, there's this thing called the chaperone. I mean, that's what those towers are, isn't it? So basically, yeah, you set you set up barriers, and once so you get you, close so to the you, barrier, it yeah, flashes the camera on turns on. Yeah, yeah, the camera turns on and shows you what the camera's looking at in the real world. So you can say, "Puppy, what are you doing there? I don't want to trip on you." But I can't remember if the camera's lower or higher than your normal perspective, and it looks weird. You, the camera... Mm. Do you know what I mean? It's not eye level, so it just looks a little bit weird when you got it on. You say that, but, like, how do you know what you're really looking at? What you would be really looking at? Yeah, uh, okay, it might just be the angle. Ape. I don't know. Maybe. I have no experience <laughs> using it yet. I'm still trying to set it up. I don't know if Chris was trying to get our attention, or... I just said, meh. <laughs> I'm like blowing my nose and contributing at the same time. Oh, okay. Is that what you call it? Well, that's what we call professional in New Zealand, so. Uh, we don't do that professionally over here. No, we don't do nothing professionally here. <laughs> I can tell. I know. <laughs> Wait, uh, can you hear this? <laughs> well, are I, you I farting into the microphone? <laughs> Is that a cat? <laughs> what is going on? And welcome to the One Up Gaming Podcast. We have our fourth member, Shello the Cat. <laughs> Dude, a cat? You just had your first cat on the podcast, guys. Kitty cat. We used to have a dog on quite regular. George is still a regular. <laughs> Fuck you. Meow. What a time to be a vibe. <laughs> oh, well, do you know... Now you're putting the catchphrase. This week we're sponsored by Audible. <laughs> <laughs> he just, he's like, fuck you. <laughs> do you want to listen to free and interesting books? I Try the Audible 30 day trial. And join Audible today. You can enjoy your first listen on us for free. Of for course. Free? Yeah, free. If you don't like your first book, you can always exchange it for another free. Free? Yeah, it's loads of freeze in this. So what are you waiting for? Visit www.audibletrial.com slash O-U-G and try the Audible 30-day trial right now. What if you don't like to read? Well, it's an audiobook. You don't yeah. have to read. 
he doesn't have anything else to say. <laughs> he didn't think this through. What game have you guys played lately? <laughs> <laughs> this has been the best podcast ever. Yeah, so you go, George. What have you been playing? Um, I've only been playing one game recently, and that's Xenoblade Chronicles X. Um, and I am really into it. So I started playing that maybe, I guess it would be about a week ago now. Um, and I already put in over 20 hours into it. It's just, it's, I don't know what to say. It's, it's awesome. I haven't played the, the Wii game, the predecessor to it, and I haven't really played any of the other Xeno stuff or whatever. So this but, is uh, Wii. yeah, this is for the Wii U. Um, and it's, 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 it's really fun. It's, it can be frustrating at times, but I have to say, if I started playing this last year, which I actually, I think I did get it last year at some point, but I put it off. Um, this would probably be my favorite game of 2015. Um, yeah, yeah, it's, what's up? It, it, so it did come out last year. You just haven't got around. Yeah, to it. it came out last yeah, year. Yeah, it came yeah. out like December. I want to say. Okay. I think it was around towards the end of the year. Maybe yeah. it might come out a little bit early in the UK, but yeah, it was a couple of months earlier. I think. Yeah, it's it's really fun though. It's um, it's an RPG, and it's so it's weird to explain it because I want to say it's kind of like Monster Hunter combined with like Gundam. I haven't gotten to that part yet. Um, funny enough, been playing for like twenty hours and I still haven't gotten like the mech. But uh, really? yeah, yeah. I I don't know. I have no idea when I unlock those things. In the trailers, that seems like a real like key gameplay point, and you're twenty hours in and don't have one. I yeah, think I've also been doing a lot of side stuff. About so twenty five, thirty hours on average before really? you unlock the mech. Yeah. Damn. Oh wow. Okay. So, like, I'm on chapter 6, and I know there's at least 12 chapters. There might be more. And I've put in, like, 20 hours, so... But that's also doing all the, almost all the side stuff. Yeah. Um, but I want to I say this is kind of like Monster Hunter combined with White Knight Chronicles, if you've ever played that. I've Which not, is another not, no. RPG on... Uh, <laughs> that's on PS3. It was on PS3. Was, yeah, by level 5, I want to say. Yeah, I think it was, yeah. Yeah, um, where it's an open world, and it's kind of like a single-player MMO, but not. it doesn't exactly play like an MMO. It plays more like a, a, like a single-player RPG. But the world is, like, huge. And uh, it, what you do is you can target an enemy, and you can go into, like, battle stance, and it'll auto-attack for you, and each weapon has... Uh, different like cooldown rates of when the next auto attack will be so each class has uh a different kind of gun and a different kind of melee weapon so right now the class i'm using has these weird guns that like float above you and they shoot in bursts and then the weapon is like a it's kind of like a lightsaber but not really it's like a beam saber or something like that um, it's, it's, it's really fun. You get to choose skills and, uh, you, you can use skills and you gain like battle points and you put battle points into skills and like, uh, arts, arts are the things that you use to attack. Is there much of a story? Is there much of a story? Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, it's so earth has been destroyed. And the last of humanity has been on the ship called the White Whale. The White Whale crashes and lands on this planet called Mira, I believe. And you are looking for um, important pieces of the White Whale. I don't really want to say spoilers because this shit's actually pretty good. All right. Um, I was like, there was like a, tw <coughs> there was a twist like in one of the earlier chapters that where I was really surprised. It, 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 it like twisted. I was like, "Oh wait, I'm what like this," and then it twisted again. I was like, "Wait, what?" <laughs> What'd you say? You said it twisted. I'm pretty sure that's what a twist does. 
Yeah, yeah, no, that's exactly what a twist does. It twists. <laughs> um, and what's really interesting is in this single player game, there's this kind of like social thing to it. So not only can you basically talk to characters outside of battle and everything, but uh, you set up situations in where it's kind of like a quick time event, but not really in a way where you have to push when you get a prompt in the middle of the screen while you're fighting to press the B button. And depending on if you get it in the, the ring or just inside of the ring, like you could get a perfect timing or you could get a good timing or you cannot get it at all. And if you get the perfect or the good timing, your character will say something uh, something like, it's weakened, attack it now with melee! And, uh, uh, one of the characters in your party can retort with that, with, with an attack that's like melee or gun based, or it might be a buff, a debuff, um, stuff like that. And what happens is the attack is stronger and also puts on a status effect for a little bit. So it might be something like plus 50% damage or you might gain invincibility for a few seconds, something like that. And it's really cool. And also NPCs themselves will shout out things. And if you react to it in time, like use the right kind of art, um, it will do basically just the same thing. And when you do that, um, you gain affinity between each other. It's a little bit, uh, but you gain an affinity. And if you keep fighting with the same uh, characters, the affinity will obviously grow quite a bit. And it's it's a really interesting game because I haven't really seen anything like this before. I've seen kind of like the combat done before in like White Knight Chronicles 1 and 2, but it's like they really expanded on it as well as doing the, you know, basic RPG stuff of getting weapons and looking at loot and seeing what's better and then upgrading it by using uh, items that you get from killing enemies. Um, you can destroy different parts of enemies' body parts. So, like, you could destroy their tail or this thing on their their head and you'll get, like, an item from it. And you can use these items to upgrade or create new weapons. Uh, there's a, there's a good amount to this game. Like, it's funny because it's kind of a lot of the same thing over and over again, but it doesn't get boring, at least not to me. So you're exploring these this world, and it has different sections to it too. It has like a normal plain section, it has like a rainforest, it has like a desert, and you have to. Uh, there's like a side thing where you put probes around everywhere, and you get a land survey, and you get like a little percentage actually on the map on the gamepad. And there's actually a few quests or uh, missions that uh, require you to get a de- like a certain percent of survey on an area before you can actually start that mission. It's it's really interesting. You gain materials over time from those probes if they're mining probes, and and then there's like a development thing where there are different companies within the the main city and when you use their weapons and gear you'll gain development points and you also gain this uh, currency it's not money but it's some kind of currency and you can put that currency into their development and make them develop uh, new weapons and better weapons and everything uh, faster and it's it's really interesting so once you start finding alien races that want to work with you they'll start setting up a uh, their own development companies inside the city and you'll start getting newer weapons and all that. It's, 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 I've been playing for 20 hours and the game keeps building up with new mechanics. And I, like I, it hasn't plateaued yet and I still haven't gotten the mechs. So it goes to show you. (laughs) I mean, I will say when it came out, I was very interested in it. It looked really quite good. I don't think you would personally like it. I mean... But I could be wrong about that. The problem I had with it is... The backgrounds look absolutely stunning. Yeah. But the character models look very... Yeah, Nintendo 64 sort of style. What? Very low Not really. They, 
they look really good. I thought they looked completely uh, I, I, out I, of place. The backgrounds look great. They look like next gen. The character Every, models look like history. Everything looks great to me. That that was just me. I don't know, I it just, looks beautiful. I just felt as though the characters just looked as though they were just like superimposed onto the background so they're not like connected within the, the game. I I would disagree with that, but you are entitled to your opinion. I mean, I, I've not played the game. I've, it's just from what I've seen. Right. But, I don't know. I would disagree with that. Everything looks great to me. Especially on a Wii U. Like, I'm not saying the Wii U is bad. It's just that... Like, Wii U, like, the other Wii U games I have, yeah, they look good. But, like, this game looks beautiful. I mean, I got a hold of the... It's like F-Zero, but not F-Zero. I, I can't remember what it's called. F-Zero, but not F-Zero. Well, this is on the Wii U? Yeah. It's a, on the eShop. Oh, I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I mean, the only problem I had with it is you have to go through... Like gates of certain colours and you've got to change your ship to that colour to go through the gate. Yeah, I'm not really... And I weren't a big those. fan of that. Yeah. I mean, one, I'm colour blind, so colours, I don't oh, really go for that kind that. of thing. Yeah, yeah. But other than that, it looked, that looked amazing. I think it was 60 frames a second as well. Well, I mean, a good amount of stuff on the Wii U is 60 frames. Yeah, unlike a lot of the other machines now. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you look at, like, they were making 60 frame a second games on PS2. Yeah. Like, I don't know what, they, what they're doing now. They're pushing the graphics because all the Call of Duty kids want better graphics. Like, you know, like, I would still play a game from, like, N64 era and not have problems with the graphics as long as they're decent. Yeah. You know? Like, I mean, it's I've, more about the gameplay and the story. For I've me. been playing a lot of PS1 games, and those games have aged badly. Oh, God, I was playing a... P so, I didn't put this on the list for what I was playing, because I only played it for maybe half an hour? But, like, I was playing a game called Tobol Number 1, and that's pretty good for PS1. I don't know, I'm on the I'm on the opposite end. I, I need graphics. Like, <laughs> Wow, um, <laughs> really? <laughs> I like. Wow. I think. I think in the respect of like, I don't need something that looks significantly better than what we've got now. I don't right. sit there and go, "It should look better than this." But like, when I've seen something like Uncharted Four and been immersed in something that looks as good as that, but also plays amazingly, then when I play a game which like looks like Life is Strange, I go, "Why couldn't this have looked better?" You need like, to realize, though, it's not just that; it's also art style. So art style can be no, 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 no. And I, and I, I that, uh, that affect that. Like, like for example, like Digimon Cyber Sleuth, which I'm still playing. I'm right. like, it's not realism. It's got its own art style. It's got like a Japanese manga kind of look. You tell <laughs> you're telling me that digital monsters are not realistic. Oh, I know it's crazy, man. It's, that's weird, man. It's a new direction they're taking. It's cartoonish. I know not many people like it. Yeah, it's but strange. like, like that's the look that they've been known for. That's the look they've gone for. Like, and yeah. it looks it looks graphically good for that art style. I'm just saying, like, you you have some games come out and like they just straight up don't look good. It, and it's just like, I guess I don't really go and look at a game and say, hmm, I'm gonna give this game's graphics a three out of ten. Like, I don't, I don't know. It looks just, like a I game. I, I, no, I'm just. I guess I'm saying I find it like if it has an amazing gameplay system, well, then it's a different story. You can easily get past it. If it has an amazing story, then yeah, you can usually get past it. But I just find like it's just so much easier to immerse myself in those other aspects if the graphics are good. Okay, so I have to ask you now: uh, How do you feel about? Uh, current gen animals with fur I think they look weird yeah they look like they're stuffed animals nothing like, beats yeah, they, the they, original they, xbox they, they all look like they, like you look at it and you're like it looks realer than anything from before but still it looks still looks weird. so bad like not bad but it looks fake I guess you could say yeah I don't know it's, like I, it's, it's so I, weird man 
I guess the example I would use, right, is in 2015, the two big RPGs for the year that I played were The Witcher and Fallout. Okay. And <coughs> both of them had decent gameplay. <coughs> both had a decent story. But I was way more immersed in Witcher because it looked stunning. Whereas Fallout was like, eh. I can't get immersed. So, I don't really like Fallout 4 that much. It's alright. Um, like, I can't I can't get Im- So, like, I like playing 3 New Vegas and f- 4 is fine. Um, I can't get immersed in any of those 3. Like, it's not a matter of graphics for me. It's a matter of just, like, how it feels. You know? I think it has to be a certain level. I mean, to me, I can understand where like Chris is coming from because he thinks retro is like PS2 sort of thing. And to me, I remember when games were in the early 80s, so I've actually seen games change from that all the way up to what they are now. From Master System all the way to yeah. Saturn? So I've actually <laughs> got a perspective of I can remember times when so when I'm playing games, I can actually give it a bit of a break if it doesn't look perfect. But for Chris, he's now at a time where he's playing games where they've always looked good. So if it doesn't look quite as good as he's used to, it's just something not quite there. Yeah, and maybe maybe it is my history with games. Like, I don't know, I just... If a game is to a certain level, like Skyrim, when I played Skyrim... The first thing I thought was, because I think I just played Infamous 2 in L.A. Noir before I played it, and the first okay. thing I thought when I played Skyrim was, this looks like shit. I don't think wow. I'm I know. Like, I, that's I'm, like, I'm not going to defend Skyrim. Like, it has better graphics than it's the game before it, yeah. But, like, I'm not going to defend Skyrim. But, wow, that's that's weird. Well, I, I like, do you remember how good L.A. Noir looked with its facial motion cap, like, the facial capture and all that so kind of stuff? So, I played it on PS3, and it looked fine, but it didn't look as good as the other versions? I don't know. So, I just played that. But Skyrim played so good that I didn't care. See, the thing is, like... When I was a kid, I did play a little of, like, the NES before I got the PlayStation. So I start. I basically started on the NES. And then we got the play. So, like, I jumped, like, was it, like, a gener? That's, like, two or... That's, like, two or three generations or something like that? I don't know. I skipped to, like, the PS1 after that. And that was awesome. So, like, I, I basically kind of saw... I've seen the the evolution as well, basically. And it's just like... I don't don't know. Like, I could go play, like, a PC game from, like, 2004 and still say, wow, this looks pretty good. Yeah, I mean, I can play old games and still get enjoyment. Yeah, like, there's... Like, there are PS2 games that I play and say, wow, this looks pretty good. I mean, really, when you think about it, it's... The early days of PS1, yes, the controls are quite bad. Oh, God, let's not talk about the... <coughs> the general games are very similar to what they are. They've just been buffed up and shined a hell of a lot more. Yeah. But the idea of the game, like a 3D, open-worldy sort of game, started with the PS1 sort of tech, and they've just improved and improved and improved every year up until where we are now. But... So, Chris, what have you been playing? Oh, you're dying. Well, I'm, <clears throat> I'm like bloody dying over here, man. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, you know when you, you know when you get like a little like tickle in your throat, and you just can't stop coughing. Oh God, that was me all day today at work. Yeah, man. I'm like just sitting here, and I'm like, so man, like Skyrim. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, what have I been playing? Um, I haven't had heaps of time this week to game. So, pretty much just been playing Digimon. Again. Digimon what? Cyber Sleuth Stories Ultimate Tenkaichi. Because there, <laughs> because there are a good amount of Digimon games out there. Um, oh, wait, you play Modern because the graphics look bad on the older ones. <coughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> I remember a Digimon game where you put music CDs in and it created Digimon. 
that's not. I don't think that's Digimon. I think you're thinking of Monster Rancher. No, I'm sure it's a Digimon. One of the ones on the PS1. I think you're thinking of Mon. That might be a Digimon <laughs> game. I could be wrong, but that is also Monster Rancher. The only other anyway. game is that Vib Ribbon that uses CDs, I can think of. I never... We never got Vib Ribbon over here. Uh, damn you. It wasn't very um, good. I wouldn't but know. Not, but you know, so uh, Cyber Sleuth, I'm like... I'm like mixed. Because it's like... <clears throat> I'm enjoying it, but I'm enjoying it because like purely of nostalgia, to be honest. Because it doesn't look good? <laughs> Fuck off, George. <laughs> Like, I'm, like, I'm, I've got, like, Guilemon, who's, like, a little, like, red dragon-looking thing. Oh, yeah. And I train him for a bit, and then he, and then I'm, like, it's, like, oh, you can evolve into, like, one of these four mystery options. But you could also, like, de-evolve <laughs> them and then re-evolve them to get, like, better stats or something. Yeah, yeah. Which is, I don't know, I've never played a game like that before, where it's, like, oh, make yourself worse to make yourself even better. But it's also cool, because sometimes, like, you'll... You'll evolve into a real fucking shit looking Digimon. Like I got the the what was it the Toy Agumon or whatever. Yeah, yeah. That one's like the leader of my island now. Because I had like I had like Agumon, and I was like, oh, he looks sick. He's like a little dinosaur. And then I evolved him into some like naked, bald, round man. <laughs> and I was oh, like, I do, not wanna, I do not want to be like. Getting a naked bald man to fight people in this like kids game, like. So did you like de evolve? <laughs> yeah, I immediately was like, "Fuck that!" <laughs> de evolve the shit out of him. I was like, "I'm gonna wait and take whatever I can get, Elf." <laughs> so now, like, so like, I like the nostalgia because I'm like evolving like that Gaomon, and then it's like you've got Graumon. I'm like, "Oh fuck yeah, Graumon!" Like I used to watch him when I was like seven. But as a game, like it's. It doesn't really go anywhere. I mean, like, it's an RPG. <coughs> yeah, but I mean, at least in RPGs, like, you get... You you at least feel, like, a difficulty rise. So the difficulty is not rising in that game, as you're saying? Not at all. Okay, I, f- I thought I was just still early on in the game, but I felt the same way. Yeah, I started off, I was like, this is relatively easy. I'm because sure you, can have your, you can have your Digimon gain experience on the island that you have and then you can just evolve them and then if you want you just swap out the digimon so that the ones that are lower leveled in your party just get experience yeah well that's what i've been doing like i like i've got about three three teams of five now that i kind of work with right and i'll like i'll work with one party and i'll get them all going i'll try level them up through fighting and then the moment i get kind of bored at looking at them because they've all got like a the kind of limited skill set that you kind of see them, like, repeat a lot of. Yeah. Okay, I'll put them on the island, and I'll take another team, and I'll take them out, and I'll I'll play with them for a bit. And by the time I come back to that first team and, like, pick them up, I'm like, oh, I'll go back to them. Like, they've leveled up maybe eight times each, you know? Right. They're close to kind of, like, their next evolution. So, it's like, leveling up is not hard, but then, like, I was just, I was playing the game and I was still fighting like fairly low level enemies and I'm about 13 hours in and I was still fighting like fairly low level enemies and I had like champion level Digimon, like, like I had like a giant T-Rex like fighting this little ball of like pink and I was thinking like, I'm way too OP, I'm going to train up like a new set of Digimon, you know, maybe then it'll like, it'll be harder. I started off with like the lowest level Digimon for my new team, took them out and I still just wiped the floor with everyone. Like, so what I like doing in RPGs is actually grinding to be OP. So I don't think I'd have too too much of an no, issue see, I, with that. Yeah, I get that as well. Like I, but I get like say in like Dragon Age, you would right. suck to begin with. You know, like <sighs> Dragon Age, I would argue that you would always suck. <laughs> that you would always what? Suck. <clears throat> yeah, but that's but you could grind to the point where like you could go up to some level of enemies and absolutely destroy. Kind of, yeah. Depends on which Dragon Age, really. Yeah, well, uh, Inquisition, like, you would you would be shit a lot, but then you could grind and go up to, you know... I as got a level bored 15. of that game. But as a level 30, you could go up to level 15 enemies and destroy them later on. Yeah, with yeah. A difference to begin with. Yeah. In Digimon, it's like, I go up against level 5 enemies with a, with a level 20 Digimon, and I destroy them. 
but then I go up against level 5 enemies with level 3 Digimon and I still destroy them. See, the thing is, I just take whatever Digimon I like, not even just like skill bodies, I just like, and then I just put them in the party and that's how I play. As that's I said, I think my, my kind of like consensus with the game is it's kind of like... Uh, as I think it's game, more of like the exploring and story parts of yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think as a game, it's pretty weak, but the nostalgia part keeps me there. And then it's got like a weird supernatural Japanese story. <coughs> Man, this guy's dying here. I know, I'm like so dead. <laughs> Podcast gold. What a time to be a vibe. God fucking damn it. <laughs> um, no, nah, like, there's, like, a weird supernatural story. Like, you'll have people come up to you and be like, can you take a picture of a digital ghost for me? You're like, Oh, what? yeah, I did that one recently. <clears throat> yeah, there's, like, this weird stuff like that. And then you'll have people, like, come up, like, you'll have, like, one quest. And it'll play, like, a Persona-type game, like, uh... You'll kind of, like, run around a mall and run around, like, the streets around your mall, like, trying to find seedy jobs for your high school friend of yours who wants to make money quick. Yeah. And, like, you'll, like, run up to people and then be like, hey, I'm looking for a job for my friend. And, like, one dude will be like, yeah, can you stay in this digital house where we hide dead bodies, but as long as there's someone renting the house, no one will catch us. Wait, and it's what? Like, yeah. yeah, and it's like, yeah, as a high school student, I'll do that. That's fun and quirky. I... I, I want to see this now. Holy and shit. And then you'll and then you go to another dude and he'll be like, can you take a picture of a digital ghost for me? And then you'll run up to another dude and he'll be like, hey. I'm the digital can ghost. Can you launder money for us? And I'm <laughs> like, the hell? This is like, this game is like for eight year olds and up. Not and then really. Like, no, well, that's, that's the rating on the box, I mean. But that doesn't mean that. No, no, I, I had, trust me, George, I had this argument with everyone last week about how this is, it's not a kid's game because it's fucking Digimon. It's like, it's still... Yeah, no, good. it's not a kid's you game. You can still enjoy it. You can still enjoy it, but I'm just saying, like, kids... I mean, young. like, Forza, Forza, Forza Motorsport gets, like, an E for everyone rating does not mean it's for kids. No. That just means the content is all right for kids. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But no, man, like, it just... The story is just kind of weird, and it keeps you going with its kind of weirdness and like. So, like these stories of like hiding dead bodies and stuff, like reminds me of this uh, Super Famicom game that didn't come out outside of Japan, and it's uh, Shin Megami Tensei, which is a spinoff of Megami Tensei, which obviously led to the spinoff game uh, game series Persona. Um, and it was like a super mature game where like the fir- like the beginning of the game starts with like a murder of a high school girl in a park. And it has to do with like summoning demons and fighting demons and fusing demons together. And it has all this religious bullshit in it. And like there's a part where you can get your dog and your dog's like with you. And then you could just fuse your dog to the other demons. That's actually pretty sick. Uh... It's sick in two ways, yes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that's that's what it that's what you were talking about kind of reminds me of, in a way. But, yeah, I mean, so, as, as I said, like, I don't, I don't know. I'd say to people, like, when it comes to Digimon, if you watch Digimon as a kid, play it. It's fun. If you didn't, probably yeah. give it a miss. Um, but yeah, no, if, that- you, if you don't, like, di- or you don't know what Digimon is or you don't, know anything about Digimon, like, you should pass this game. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, other than that, that's kind of what I played this week. Um, I picked up a whole ton of new games, which I haven't jumped into yet, but I'll probably talk about next week, because I picked up, yesterday I picked up Just Cause 3, Far Cry Primal, and the new Ratchet & Clank. I want to... Let me know how you what you think about the new Ratchet & Clank, because I was interested in getting it, but I don't know if I'd want to play it. Like, have you played the other ones? I've played the first one around the time it came out, but not too long. Okay. And not- that was a while ago, so I don't I don't know. Well, the first one came out in 2001. Yes. I played that one. I wasn't a big fan. Then I played one on the PS3, like a downloadable one, and I didn't like that either. 
Well, you I mean, don't have, seem like the type of person who would like that series. I thought it was going to be like a a platform game, but it's more of it, a... It kind of is, but not I'd say exactly. It's going it's more for like a third-person shootery sort of angle. It kind of is, but not really. I don't know, like, it is, it's more shooting, like, yeah, you jump occasionally, but it, it's more shooting, it's more about the guns. Like, yeah, no, it's, it's, ba- it, it, like, it's about the combat, but, I don't know, I don't know how to explain myself. Be, but, yeah, it's not, it doesn't seem like a game for you. Uh, but then I wouldn't know, David, because as I say, you've mentioned, like, you play all the bloody soccer games. Your favorite game well, is... Well, the thing racing. is, he would, he would like it... If it was a list of names that he sent out on missions. But then, and then but they then, came back and said, hey, I finished this mission. But then we say that, but then he played Saints Row yesterday. Yeah, but Saints, Saints Row the Third is different from Ratchet and Clank. I know, but Saints Row the Third is different, very different from a soccer game. He's, he has a very eclectic <laughs> type of taste. That's what I'm saying. Like, David has, like, <laughs> specific takes, but that vary, like, very differently from one another. Yeah, it's it's weird. He's weird. Care to chip in about your thoughts I, on David, David? I, I am here, but, you know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> so, have you been watching anything else, Chris? Um, I saw a movie called Money Monster last night. Uh, it was actually pretty sick. I've never heard of it. I want to I wanna ask what it's about, but I feel stupid if I ask that question. Okay, so George Clooney, he is the host of a TV show about where you should invest your money. So yes, he'll, yes, oh, I've heard of it, sorry, yeah. Stock market, he'll look at um, the kind of trends of what stocks are going up and down across the world, and he'll tell you where to invest your money every week. And I have to ask, though. Sorry to interrupt you. Wouldn't that make it less efficient than if everyone was putting it in this in the same place? Well, exactly. Okay. So he's giving people this advice, and then he kind of has this businessman he trusts, um, and he's kind of like harping on about how great he is, how great his company is. So everyone kind of invests in him, and then this business is this businessman's company has this computer glitch. And loses eight hundred million dollars. Holy shit! And of just different investors' money. And one of these investors is this kind of mentally unstable guy who's like mum died recently, and he invested her entire like inheritance into this company because it was recommended by the dude on the TV show. So he then goes on the TV show and tries and, to kill him. And, yeah, he holds the host and all the cut and all the kind of crew hostage with like. It sounds a like an American movie. <laughs> yeah, it is an American movie. <laughs> um, and yeah, it's all about kind of like they're trying to you know deal with this guy who's going to blow up everyone in the building kind of over this. It was um, I don't want to spoil anything, but the way it went, I was actually really really surprised because I was expecting like a, a very generic like Hollywood action kind of cliche film like did they have a the, dance party at the end no no dance party oh, fuck i don't like this movie and it's got julia roberts in it yeah it does. oh really uh julia roberts jack o'connell yeah um but no i was like expecting like very specific beats the whole time and it actually like it was very real it was like they tried to do these things that like would work in a movie but then actually, like, the outcome is what would happen in real life. Like, like I won't go into too much detail in case it spoils it, but... <coughs> I think telling me the end of a movie would spoil it. <coughs> they all shook hands and go home. There's, there's like, oh, one fuck. scene where... There's one scene where the main character tries to, like, harbor, like, the general good of, of all people. And kind of tries to get, like, everyone on board, like, let's all work together. If we work together, we can defeat this greater evil. Like, you know, we can defeat the bad guy. Like, the good of humanity will solve this issue. And then everyone's just like, nah, fuck that. I'm going to look out for myself. And they're, like, completely screw over the main character. Uh, and it's, it's like that. We are like, well, that's real life. Like, not everyone's going to be like, yes, I'll give you a million dollars. 
to save, you know, like, you know, like for the greater good, like life's just not like that. Yeah, no, it's not. Especially in America. I don't know. It was just, it was very real. It was good acting. And I, I, I thought it was like, it was, it was a different film. I hadn't, it was a bit different. Okay. Anything else? <laughs> no, I've run out. Of, I've run out of topics, David, and I'm and I've finished dying. So, I'll, what what have you been playing, David? I have to ask though, were the graphics good? <laughs> <sighs> they were like PS3 graphics. I walked out halfway through the film. Oh, so they were pretty good. No, no, <laughs> I, don't even like, I don't even like PS4 graphics. To be honest, they all look terrible. <laughs> I can't tell if you're joking right now. Sarcasm is a great thing. There is, there is absolutely no sarcasm dripping from my chin. You should go play a Master System game. That shit looks good. I don't know, like, like the fact that, like, a, like ancient games for me were like Crash Bandicoot. <laughs> Crash Bandicoot, ancient games. Crash, the first Crash Bandicoot came out the year I was born. Like... <laughs> It's old man. Wasn't it? I mean, you're not it, like you're not that much younger than I am. But did damn. it come out in like '96 or something? '98, yeah. something like that. You, like, yeah, you're not that much younger than I am. But fuck, what, what we did have you two do different. Then? At like, at like three years old, were you like, yo, I want to play the original Pong? Why like, I was playing NES. <laughs> but why were you playing NES? Like, because is that my parents own a, an NES? So when you yeah. were born, I was 15. Yeah, man. <laughs> God damn. Just about ready to leave school. <laughs> Millennials. <laughs> yeah, so... I got sent a review code for... They've just released a, an add-on for the Hitman Sniper for iOS. And what, wait, what is what is Hitman Sniper on iOS? It's can you remember the old arcade games called Sniper Elite, and it also was on PS2 and Xbox. Yes, yeah. it's that sort of concept where. It, oh, is it like the the little standalone game that you got for pre-ordering Hitman Absolution, where you're just standing on a rooftop shooting people? It might even be that same game. Okay. And they've okay. just released like a an a DLC for it. Um but if, I think it was about 2 3 quid if you didn't pre-order it. You get to stand on the other rooftop. So the sent codes out for that and I thought I've heard good things about it and it's it is actually really quite fun. Um assuming that it is what I'm talking about. Yeah, like sniper the sniper challenge game is pretty good. Yeah. I actually do want to get the new Hitman because it, it. I have my doubts because Absolution, but this game actually looks like traditional <laughs> wait, 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 Hitman. Wait, wait, wait. Why did you not like Absolution? Because Absolution was not a true Hitman game. As someone who has not not finished but played the other Hitman games, especially like Blood Money. See, I always uh, find that interesting because I know a lot of people dog on Absolution, but that was my first Hitman and I loved it. Like. It's like it's most definitely an interesting game, but it does not work the way that Hitman usually works. And like, with the like new the one, differently. what like the new one does like what did the originals do and the new one do that Absolution didn't? It, it made it so the character moved better and played better, but people didn't like that. <sighs> not really. Yeah, the old ones like, are very. S- it 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 had this this stiff. whole like. I, I guess you could say that. But, like, it had this whole system where, like, you had, like, intuition or something, and you could use it to, like... you can turn all them off. Oh, can you? Yeah, you can turn all them off. You covered covered your... your, You you took a hat, and you put, like, you pulled it over your eyes, and it's like, huh, do I know that guy? I don't know. But David's right. You could turn that off. Like, I played, like, that initial... I played that initially because I was like, I don't know how to play Hitman. But then once I got used to it, it was like, okay. And then you turn on to a harder difficulty, you turn that kind of stuff off, and it plays like you don't have any intuition. It like, just didn't... You walk up to someone with a hat on, and you, you were immediately caught. It just it just didn't feel right. To me, and the difference it was is, like... the old Hitman games, 
they, I mean, I started off with Hitman 2 on the original Xbox. Oh, yeah. And I loved that so much. I was, was really bad contracts? at it. No, it's just called Hitman 2. No, it wasn't. They all have subtitles. Which like, is Silent like, Assassin. Oh, was it? Okay, so it Was Contracts the console-only game? I, don't, I can't remember. Because I know there was Hitman Agent, what was his number, 47? Yeah, and then there's there's Silent Assassin Contracts, Blood Money... They they all had they all had subtitles. They didn't have numbers in front of them, which actually is something I liked. Uh, I don't have problems with like games with numbers in front of them, but like if they put think, effort into putting like, subtitles, it's nice. It doesn't feel like I don't feel like the Hitman games have felt like a very continuous story. Um, actually, I don't know about the like, newer ones, but I know the older ones are. Do you want to know something scary? Your face. I've just googled it, and it's. Hitman 2, Silent Assassin. <laughs> Are you sure about that? Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's on the Wikipedia. Yeah, it went... It went How Hitman scary, I was Hitman. right. <laughs> Hitman codename... I don't Zero. remember there being a Hitman 3, though. <laughs> nah, it, I think that was two, Contracts. It went, it, it went contracts I think that was... Yeah, I think that was the only one with a... So I was par- I was mostly right. That was the only one with a, a number in front yeah. of it. Okay? But yeah, I think... When they did the absolution, the character movement went a lot more like a a Tomb Raider sort of a lot more fluid. And people, I wouldn't say Tomb Raider, but it it did feel more fluid. People didn't like that. They liked the fact that the old ones, yes, it was a bit janky, but it was a lot harder to move around and know. do stuff. I, I like the fluidity. I like the realism. But yeah, I, I preferred absolution to be honest. Didn't like the graphics though. I thought they were quite good. You you are banned from talking about graphics. <laughs> hey George. No, fuck you. Sega Alley. Graphics, graphics on your profile <laughs> picture are pretty low, bro. Four eighty p. Do you even know what that means? Four eighty p, three sixty p. Do you even know what that means? Does yeah, anyone it's... even know what these mean? Like, people, like, are always talking about numbers and P's, and it's like, do you guys even know what that means? George, George. Yes. Shut the fuck up. HDMI 4K, 60 frames per second. (laughs) Which is something you can't get on your consoles right now. Do you know what's quite funny? What? Do you know the (sighs) Ultra HD, what the now basically said that's going to be the standard for 4K. It's yeah. not technically 4K. They're using, the, not? they're using the measurement from the opposite sort of side of the screen, so it's technically only 2K, but... <laughs> okay. You know, but it's it's weird. I didn't know they were measuring from the... Okay. Yeah, hey. instead of going from corner to corner, going like top to bottom, or, something, or like side to side, it's something well, weird. Well, when you say something like 1080p... That means that there's 1,080 lines going yeah. uh, vertically, like like from like top row to bottom row. Yeah, I think the 4K ones are going from you know like it's I don't know how they do it, but it's they're measuring it from the opposite way around. Right, so it's it's counting the columns. Yeah, not the rows. So which it's, is, it which sounds is less more, because wide screen. but it's wider, so you're getting more on it or something. Yeah. But anyway, the Dead Island collection or re redo thing, whatever the hell you want to call it. Are you talking about graphics again? It's it's basically Dead Island, Dead Island Riptide being remade up for the PS4 and Xbox One. Okay. Right up against you, George. And last week, I I put the disc in. Dead Island was there, but I couldn't find Riptide, or I couldn't find the little crappy game. Oh, it's right behind you. But what it is, it's only Dead Island on the disc. You have to put it... You open up the the case, and it's got like a little code. Oh, it has a download code for the other two games? And you put the code in, and it downloads the other two games. See, they did this with, like, uh, Final Fantasy the Final Fantasy X remaster thing, like, on Vita. Yeah. It, 
had 10 on the, the chip, and then, like, the download code was for 10 too. <laughs> wait, wait, but how does that work, then? Because, like, say you return the Dead Island collection, right? The physical copy. So, yeah, like, they, they would only have the Dead one Island game. Plus. Yeah. You literally lose the other games. Like, it's not a collection, then you're just buying Dead Island 1. It doesn't matter. The graphics were worse on the other two. But... I didn't say I wanted to play them. <laughs> I tell you, I remember playing it on the 360, the original Dead Island. Thinking How was the frame rate on those consoles? Pretty bad. It's the same sort of game. The only thing I remember from the old ones, when you got into the forest, I thought it looked quite nice. But on this one, you can actually see where the popping is. So when you're looking off a ledge, you're looking down, you can see where the trees stop in the distance. And, and when you move job. your head, it's sort of like the trees sort of pop in and black lines sort of pop in at the bottom of the screen and as it's loading. It's probably so the, the port job. Yeah, I think yeah. they're using like a different engine and stuff. Yeah. So yeah, it's I'm supposed to be writing a review for it, but I don't know if I can be bothered to actually play it. It's not very good. I don't think it's viable to write a review on a game that came out last gen. Mm. You know, I, I, it's, I, it's I the same it. game. I mean, like, but unless it's something like the Master Chief Collection or like the Last of Us Remastered, where they yeah. kind of, they add to it. Yeah, it's I don't know that it's just like yeah, it's that's, the same game. That's before. different. But it's like you're sitting there going, "This is the same game as before," but I'm going to judge it harsher because I've seen better stuff since. Yeah. Yeah, which there's no point in reviewing remasters unless remasters add actual content to the game. See, I'll tell you what I want to see more of, what they did with Ratchet and Clank, where they actually full-on, like, redesign it. Like, it's not an actual, like, remake of the first game, because it's actually it's actually kind of different from the first game. No, 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 they've, they've, they've merged kind of, like, the overall plot. The movie and the game? Like, yeah. Some of like the movies, plot lines that they've added, and they've yeah. like they've, they've juiced it up a bit. But I, but I like that's what I mean. I like that they took the original game, and then there are parts in it that you go, "Oh my god, I did this part!" But now it looks amazing. Does and anybody know how the movie is? Bad. Uh, pretty bad. Oh really? Fuck. Yeah. I wanted. I kind of wanted to see it. I, I wouldn't uh, mind seeing it, but I wouldn't pay to see it. Okay. It's, it's pretty. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. If yeah, it, no, I it, know what you If mean. it's on, I'll just watch it, but I wouldn't. Like, like if somebody, like, said, like, hey, I'm borrowing the DVD or, yeah. or some shit like that, you want to watch it? Sure. But if it's, like, 11 bucks for a movie ticket, like, no. Well, you say yeah. that, but for us, it's, like, about £10, which is about, what's that, about $18, $20? Jesus yeah. Christ! $20 to go to one movie over here. And, oh, I mean, like, for me and my girlfriend to go watch a 3D movie at the local cinema... We'd be spending about forty quid, so that's about eighty dollars. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Like, yeah, me and my girlfriend went last night, and we yeah both bought tickets, and we bought a so we both bought tickets. That was twenty bucks each. Then we bought a slushy, which was seven dollars, and then we bought a thing of popcorn, which was nine dollars. Wow. So it, and I thought it was expensive over here. No, you guys, yeah. it's quite cheap to be honest. <laughs> Fuck, man. That's just population size. Like, the smaller the population, the more expensive shit is. So, I guess that makes sense. I wouldn't recommend the Dead Island collection. I mean, or I the... did play... You could probably just get it cheap on Steam, and it actually that's probably the best version it's probably, of it. It's probably is better, yeah. Or, or yeah. you could just buy Dying Light. But Dying Light is a different game from Dead Island. Yeah. It is what Dead Island should have been. No... Ooh. Maybe I you, liked. The you could fact be right that on that. I do like Dead Dying Island Light. was a bit slower. Dying Light to me, it's more of a parkour. Okay, run so around Dying game. Dying Light didn't have the analog attack system, which I don't like. I don't use it, and I'm not crazy about it. But like, I thought it was cool still, in the way that you would hold the attack button and then you swing the thumbstick or the the mouse in a direction, and you would attack that way. I don't yeah. know. I just felt I just felt there were too many pieces that Dying Light filled in that I wanted when I played Dead Island. Again, I've only played 
the first 10, 20 minutes of it. And I do like Dying Light better than Dead Island. I will say that. But yeah, so Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Legends. Is it good? On the mobile phone. Oh. For a mobile phone game, it's a... I guess you could call it a very, very baby sort of strategy game. Were you shell-shocked? Yes. <laughs> okay. Basically, you have like four Were or five... Donatello? You what? Were you donatello No, I've not unlocked Donatello. But I, as soon as I unlock him, he's going to be the favourite. See, I thought you were talking... Yeah, I thought you were talking about the console game. Yeah. yeah. I think that's, I will get that, but... Because I do want to know how good that is. If it's, if it's at least decent, I will probably pick From it up. From what I've like, seen I, and heard, people are kicking it, but I think it's average. Okay. I don't expect it to be shit, but I feel yeah. like... Isn't that I, a platinum game? Yeah. Yeah, it is. Okay. But I feel like I would still play it and enjoy it. I, I, I might buy it. I think I will, because it looks quite, quite nice. Is there online multiplayer? Yes, four player online. It's not... Huh. Couch co-op, it's only online. Oh, that's right, because of render, like, some yeah. stupid resource thing they were talking about, yeah. Yeah, and it's still only 30 frames a second, but I don't yeah. care. As long as it's a constant frame rate, it's fine. Like, so I already, we already, like, I already brought this up, and I already talked about this on a different episode, but, like, on a console, I'm fine, I'm fine with 30 frames, as long as it's stable. Mm. But, like, when I'm on my computer, I want, like, at least 60 because I'm, like, I put in the effort to actually get the components and everything, and it's, like, something I put together myself. So, like, I'd really prefer something at least 60 frames on on PC. I actually watched a video review for the, the Turtles game for that PS4, Xbox One. Yeah. And... He was going on a... I it's one of the first times I've ever just wanted to put a comment on saying what the... F-, you know, like, proper, just be nasty. It was like... His attitude was, oh, they couldn't have it 60 frames a second on a PC. I've built my PC to be 60 frames, this, that, the other. And then he put a summit on. And it's like, look, it's not even 30 frames, it's 27 point summit frames. It's like, get a fucking life! <laughs> See, I don't go that far... But it's yeah. like I get I get frustrated when it's not like sixty. But like if it's playable, I will still play it. Um, albeit I'll probably still kind of complain, but I won't be like it's twenty seven point seven seven six frames. See everyone, wake up, sheeple! What's going on? Like I won't like do stupid shit like that. Yeah, that it just annoyed the hell out of me. I just turned it off. Yeah, no, I I would I would be very bothered by that. So, yeah, so the Turtles Legends game, it's, I'd have a guess it's like a a strategy game where it's like you have four or five characters and you have waves of enemies that are like either three, four or five enemies and you just basically take turns in hitting them and they hit you and you just try to complete the level. So it's like a strategy RPG? It's only combat, you don't really do anything else. It's just the combat itself. So it's like a turn-based RPG. Yeah, but you don't move. Well, I don't. I don't know what that means. Like you go, you jump into a battle, and then you fight, and then it's over. Yeah. And then what happens? It goes to like a little cutscene where. And then you just do another fight. Yes. That's weird. That's what I mean. I think, but for mobile, I think it's perfect. Because you just. I- Maybe. Do one fight, turn it off, load it back up, get more cards, unlock more characters, do another fight. Okay, so, like, gauging... Gauging how a mobile game is compared to, like, console or PC is still new to me. So I guess guess that does make sense for, like, a mobile game. You know, I, I quite enjoyed it. It's very limiting. It's... I won't say easy, but it's easy to understand. I have a question for you. So yep. when we're done with the podcast, All I'll right. ask you. Because <laughs> you just you just reminded me with this mobile talk. So the last game I've played is a game called In Between. And it's actually a 2D 
platform puzzle sort of game. And the art style's really nice. And the game itself, you control the character's movement left and right. There's no jump button. And the levels look like a maze. And there's spikes at the top of the screen, bottom of the screen. And the other stick actually inverts the gravity. So you actually have to try to get from one end of the maze to the other doorway without hitting the spikes. And it's quite compelling. But like a lot of these games where I get to like level 10 and I just say, I'm bored now. And I think it's going to be the same sort of thing with this game. I I have no input. It does <laughs> sound interesting though. Yeah, it's quite nice. So the last two things that I've actually watched this week, I'll start off with the bad movie. Well, that I think was quite bad. And that was Captain America Civil War. Have any have you used to watched it? I don't really watch movies. Uh, okay. But from what everyone was everyone was saying how great it was. I thought it was great. I thought it was one of the worst movies I've ever seen. Why? It made no sense whatsoever. Oh, okay. How did it not make sense? Is it, why the hell are they fighting and still talking and being friends? Because, like, they're friends, but they, they, they're disagreeing. Yeah, but you don't have Don't massive... you usually punch your friends in the face when you disagree? No. Oh, well, you, well, you must have... not be American. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I will say the only two things I thought were quite good is the fact when Paul Rudd, Ant-Man, meets Captain America and shakes his hand and he's like, I'm still shaking your hand. You know, being like a little fanboy, like, meeting him. So your favourite part of the movie was like one minute long? Yeah, and then the other bit is when Spider-Man's fighting, okay. and one of the characters is saying, I don't know if you're new to this, but you, we don't normally talk when we're fighting. Because like Spider-Man's got all, you know, it's, like he does, he's got all these little quips and phrases. He's like and, chatty. And that's quite funny. But from I mean, he's, he sounds young, but he looks a lot older than I thought he was going to be. Really, he looks like seventeen to me. No, he looks like one of those like. It, it looks like a like a, a bit of a bodybuilding. He's got like a square head. A bodybuilder. <laughs> he's like super skinny. Oh, he is in the costume because I don't think that's him in the costume. But when you see him without the costume, he he's got a proper square head. What? I don't Why know what that means. The shape of his head relative to his age. Who no, 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 no. I'm just saying he just looks like a like a proper big bodybuilder with his square head. The body is what? <laughs> I, I don't. What does a square head have to do with bodybuilding? <laughs> like I, he is 17 though. Like, how do you think he looks like a bodybuilder? No, he, to me, he looked older than what I thought. Without everyone going on about how young he was. I just to me he looked older than what I thought he was meant to be. I don't, I don't he's, he's meant to be still at school, is so he's, what he's like sixteen or something. He's supposed to be seventeen, and the actor is seventeen. Yeah, he, he looks a lot older. All Are right, we just going to keep talking in a loop like this, or <laughs> are we gonna come, talk about the other bad movie you watched? Surprisingly, Angry Birds the movie I actually really enjoyed. Oh no. I can't tell if this is because your tastes are so weird or they actually did something successful. I mean, I'll say one scene and see if you think it's funny. The three main characters are trying to climb the mountain to find the elusive great eagle. The only bird that can fly. All the rest, they've got like they look like human arms and stuff. You know, they've... And... Got confused then. And... Are your own words? Yeah, no, I was trying to look at what you were doing. And so basically, they, they climb up the mountain to find the eagle that has been disappeared for like 20, 30 years or whatever. And they get to the top of the mountain where there's like a pristine... Bit of 
water, like a, and two of the birds jump in the water and swim in. And the main guy stood, and he's saying, get out of the pool, just get out of the pool. And then it cuts to the two swimming, and one of them gargles water and spits it, and the other one catches it in its mouth. And, <laughs> and the bird goes, oh my god, what the hell, don't do that. And then he sort of like, the other bird gargles and spits it back, and the other bird catches it. And he's like, oh my god, you spat it back, what the hell? And it, it cuts back to the other bird, and he's like, don't you dare swallow, don't you dare, and he just like, gulps. Yeah, but is this one you're watching? No. And then... This is, this is the weirdest, like, if you heard this out of context. And then they hear a noise. <laughs> so they all get out of the pool and hide behind some rocks. And then the eagle appears above the pool. And then f- all you see here is two legs. And then a stream of piss coming out of him into the water where they've just been swimming. <laughs> and then for the next sort of like minute, it's just got those two birds got like rocks on their tongues trying to scrape the tongues. And, and it's just like, for a five-year-old's movie, that is just so... Stupid and funny. I loved it. I have to say, that kind of is funny. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I was... I mean, yeah, it, I think it, bits of it dragged on a bit too long. And some of the jokes the, the weren't for me. But I think it's probably one of the best video game movies. Which is quite bad to say that. But it, it, it was fun. I just remembered that... They put those games out for like consoles, and they s- spent, they sold them for like yeah, a lo- were, like a decent amount of money, and it's like, like forty. Damn, they, they, they scammed everyone who didn't get it on mobile. It's like damn. get it on mobile for either free, free, or pay, a or pay like sixty bucks or something. Or you can get it like, on game. yeah, three sixty for was oh like forty five pound or something. Yeah, like damn, what a. Sc- Damn. But you did get three versions of the same game. Yeah, but you can <laughs> fucking get them for free on the, your fucking phone. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, that's bad. Yeah. I don't know. I'm still just caught up in the fact that I, 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 I just, I just need to say this. I just need to say this. So you say Civil War is a bad movie because Spider-Man's actor has a square head. No, no, no. no. <laughs> Spider Man's the like best thing in the movie. But then you like another film better because it has animals spitting piss into each other's <laughs> mouths. Yeah, that's funny, I... man. <laughs> Fuck, man. <laughs> that's funny, man. I'm gonna say, but this logic is just so munted. Hmm. Piss in my mouth. Now that's a good film. I t- oh, good. yeah. I don't like the shape of his head. Do you want to hear some else that will really, uh, really annoy you? Oh no! I thought Batman vs Superman was a better movie than. Ah oh, nah, oh, Captain America: Civil watch. War. Some some people say that, yeah. It's like some people that I actually deem sane said that. It is a terrible film. I haven't seen it. It's actually terrible. I, from what I heard, I actually do want to go see it. I mean, next up for me is the new X Men movie, which I knew nothing. People about have that. said is terrible, but then other people have said it's not too bad. Well, you should love it because I think it's terrible. Right. <laughs> uh, this is what it's like when worlds collide. <laughs> so I think we will just move in quickly. We'll just have a, a ten twenty minute chat about some E3 rumours that we think will be happening. Which will turn into about an hour. No, because I want to end the podcast at about an hour and a half. But then I guess about an hour and 40 minutes recording because I'll be able to cut 10, 15 minutes out. Or you should just leave it as it is. I reckon we all just chuck in like one thing each. Like I'll say one, you say one, you say one and we can just kind of go around until we feel like we've enough. That's going to be hard for me, but I'll try. Alright then, Chris, you want to go first then? Yeah, man. So, Barbie Princess Adventure 3.5. <laughs> Dude, my uh, favorite game. Uh, okay, what's my first prediction? Okay, um, first prediction is that Red Dead Redemption sequel will be announced not at E3, but a couple days before it. 
I reckon Take Two will announce that there's a Red Dead sequel that it's coming out summer 2017, and that yeah they'll do it a couple days before E3 so that everyone's still kind of got their eye on like all the big journalism sites wanting to know all the E3 stuff, but they can kind of come out the bat straight up first off get all the hype. Now, there's a reason why I didn't put Red Dead on my E3 predictions. Because might... you didn't like it? No, I, I thought it was actually quite good. Oh, okay. No, it's I, I might have an email about stuff about it that I can't really go into. They said it's cancelled. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be called Red Dead Revolver 2. No, it's not. <laughs> Wait, like, I I, I, you might second. not be able to talk about it, but did you actually get an email? I, I'm not going into it. Right. So oh, that means man. yes. He so... just, like, danced that in front of our faces and was like, see ya. <laughs> <laughs> I might have screenshots in all sorts, but that's not to talk about. So, anything from you, George? Uh, I don't I feel like... I tell you what, George, gonna... do you want to just take... Jordan Thompson emailed us some of his stuff. Do you want to just sort of take some of his sort of comments and then... Well, I actually came up with something, but I could do that as well. Well, you can come up with your own or go through some of his, see what you think. Well, the thing is, I feel like Sony is going to kick Microsoft's ass as they are going to probably reveal the Neo and talk about everything about it while Microsoft is probably just going to talk about their Slim model. You know, and... Like uh, it's nothing about like the new the new Xbox apparently yeah. it's supposed to be coming out the what is it the prototype is called the Xbox One Two or something like that no that's just internal it's actually code right, named right. Scorpio right that's what it was yeah and I think like to be honest I think it's really too soon to be doing this shit like I'm bothered by it because it's like really I bought like a PS4 and an Xbox One already. George. Now I have to like buy new ones. George. And that, I think that's why I'm what? interested because I'm like I'm like they better pitch this to me in a way that I'm going to love it because I do not like the fact that I bought my PS4 three years ago and they're already bringing something else out better. So they better market this right or like they're gonna have a lot of angry people. Do you know why they're doing it? Why? Both of them are doing it. If you go and check out the Neo's so-called internal chips, it basically puts it at a PC at the minimum specs for a, like an Oculus or a Vive. Okay, so here's the thing, though. Um, information has been leaked about like the Neo and everything, like their policy, where like. Everything has to work the same as the base PS4 version of the game. Like, what's the difference that they're going to have? It's going to, like, look better? Like, what? No, the frame rate. But, but it's also VR. supposed to be 4K. No, it's got 4K output. Oh, so it's going to scale the 1080p to 4K? Yeah, and it'll have a 4K DV- uh, Blu-ray player. I just don't like that after, like, was it, like, three years or something, they're going to release something more powerful on the same generation? From what I've heard of a couple of developers, which I'm not going to go into, right? the PlayStation console that they've been sh- having and showing off the PlayStation VR isn't actually a PlayStation 4. It's a PC with a shell on that's basically just the Neo because PlayStation VR is let's just say not very good on a base PS4 well the thing is the PS the the, the PSVR is supposed to be coming with a box that adds power rendering power along with it that was the rumor what that was, that what was the rumor. saying that confirmed that's what they're saying work. now is that it's a breakout box for power, right. but it's right. not actually got a processor in, in there. It's basically to allow 
second sc- it basically converts the picture to, so you can actually have it on a screen so other people can see what you're doing really yeah huh so that's why when I heard Neo six months ago like when you first came on the podcast we had a, a talk about it and I said I think it's just because the VR needs a bit of a boost yeah See, like, the thing is, like, I wanted to get the PSVR, but I wasn't so gung-ho on it. So, like, I'm not too worried about that. Uh, I'm just worried about what's going on on the PC side of VR. And I mean, that's also why the Xbox is getting the upgrade. I mean, right, so cause it, because they partnered with Oculus. Yeah, they're, they're going to basically, next year, you'll be able to plug an Oculus Rift into the new Xbox... Yeah. And you'll be able to play the Oculus Rift on the Xbox One, the new one. <laughs> the one two. But it's I I'm just curious about how they're going to try and spin this. I know, and that's the thing, they've got to market it right. Yeah. If they if they turn around after all this time being like you can just plug in PSVR into PS4 and they turn around and go, actually, you can it's going to look like shit, though. But if you buy the new PS4 Neo, or whatever it's called, and plug in VS, uh, PSR, it'll look great. Like, people are going to be pissed off. I I'll mean, be pissed off. I don't know if you guys can remember the PlayStation and the PSP. And yes. oh, do you know when yeah. the original PSP came out and then the new PlayStation PSP came out? Yeah. The, in, the ones before the Go, right? Yeah. In yeah, the UK, those had more RAM. In the UK, the magazines were saying loads better, looks you know faster, does everything quicker. But in Japan, because they can't say that this is better than this, they were just saying it's an upgrade sort of thing. So they, their culture is different. So I mean, because it's not been f- officially announced yet, I'm just. Very curious about what they'll say, how they'll say it. I'm I'm interested in this now, uh, the PSP thing. I thought they just had better RAM. Did they have better, like, processing power all new, all new chipsets and everything in it. Oh, uh, okay. But... Yeah, I have one of those 3000s. Yeah, so. I think it, on, on the UK it basically said that, like, 30% smaller, 50% lighter, and it loaded things, like, 50% faster. I was too young uh, when the PSP came out to, like, look at marketing shit. God, I was, like, 20-odd. I was, yeah, I was, like, <laughs> oh, my God, I might have been, like, 13? Something like that? Maybe? So, I mean, I mean oh, a lot of people are saying that Microsoft won't announce their new, as you guys are saying, the Xbox 1.2. No, 1.2. The, the Xbox 1.2. Because they'll want to announce the Xbox Slim. Yeah. And they don't want to cannibalize their sales of the old console. Right. But to me, the Xbox One has just had a price drop in America to $200. Mm Mm-hmm. And that price drop finishes the day of the E3 press conference. So that they can sell the Slim for about the same? I think the Slim, they might try and do it for $150. I think, yeah. I think and then they, that gives like that. them leeway to say, buy this for $150, or you can buy the new console for $450 or whatever. And yeah. then people will still buy the old one because it's only $150. That's a big price drop, though. I don't like what's going on it, with video games right now. In America, the Xbox One is two hundred dollars, so it's not much of yes. a price drop. Like I said, I don't like I don't like what's going on with video games right now. It's weird. It yep. Video weird. games are weird, man. The thing that annoys me, I remember like PS One, PS Two, where the machine it start off like three hundred quid, drop down to two hundred, drop down to one hundred and fifty, and then it go to a hundred, and then eighty quid. Just to get rid of them at the end of the cycle. Whereas now, even the Xbox 360, I think it's still about £150. 
Well, I, the I thing remember. is, though, they're basically dropping. Like they still have support for it, but it seems like they're dr- kind of dropping support for the 360 already because it's Microsoft. And they did the same thing with the original Xbox? I think they dropped support a couple of months after the bloody Xbox One came out. Would you say that, really? Yeah. I mean, that makes sense because it's Microsoft. Whereas, like, Sony still had support for, like, PS2 until, like, 2013. That was only because they had, like, 100 million consoles sold, or 120 million, they just... But the thing is, they already dropped support in Japan for the PS2, which was weird. But... I think because at the end of the PS3 and the Xbox 360 cycle, the last two years, there weren't many so-called like exclusive Microsoft or Sony games of, apart from like the last, you know, there was the, the odd one. And a lot of the third parties, they wanted to move over as quickly as possible to the new consoles. And once that happens, then, you know, there's not really much else coming out for the older machines. You say that, but uh, Persona 5's coming out? It's that's, not a that's because thing, but... That's because... <laughs> because in, Atlas is slow on times. No, in Japan, the ps is not selling very well. Really? I did not well, know I mean, that. I mean, in Japan, they, they hold on to their consoles longer. I yeah. Feel. In Japan, uh, I think the PSP is selling better than the PS4. I mean... Oh, really? I yeah. mean, <laughs> like, they, like, Famicom games were still being made in Japan since, like, About until, like, the 2000s. It? No, yeah. it was, like, the, I want to say it's, like, the early 2000s. Is that even, like, a Dreamcast game came out last year. But was that, like, officially yeah, developed it was or was it one of those third-party things? It was officially, like, it was an arcade game that they ported across. Okay. And it officially came out in Japan. That for was Dreamcast. a Japanese. Th- Holy shit! And I, think I want to do more Dreamcast games. I, I think like they've also thing. ported it to like Xbox Live and PSN. Right. I can't remember. It's like a, an old shoot 'em up sort of game. But yeah, so I think Forza Horizon Three is a given to be announced. I hope it. You know, I really hope it gets announced because. I liked the first two, even though I didn't finish either of them. I liked the first one, but the second what? one, I just, I didn't like the second the, one was so world. much better. I didn't like the world as much. Oh, you didn't like Europe? <laughs> it just didn't feel right. I. But how so? Uh, then again, I played it on the Xbox 360. I didn't play it on the Xbox One. Oh, that's why the so Xbox been... One's version is much better. Yeah, it might be that. <laughs> it's a different engine, also. Probably, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, that... Oh, man. The second one on Xbox uh, Xbox One is really good. It had it had me more interested than the first one did, to be mm. honest. Because uh, you were all, you were able to, like, actually drive off-road. It wasn't, like, a specified off-road path. It was, like... You see those that forest over there? Yeah, you could basically drive and ram those trees. Instead of like a lot of things just being blocked so off. I know in the first they one. released like an official rally pack, or it like DLC for it. Yes, I did not get it, and I was so wanting it, but it was like twenty quid. It was quite I would expensive. Say it might, like considering what they do, I feel like it would be worth it. Yeah, but I'd, I'd also have to buy the the game as well, so that'd be like an extra fifty quid on top. Well, the thing is, you should already have the game. No. Yes. No. So do you think yes. Crackdown 3 will be playable no. with a release date? Nope. I I think you'll get a release window. Maybe that, but I, I don't see them even talking about it. It must be playable because really? I've played it. What? They've, been, they've been talking about it coming out like in 2016. I reckon it'll get pushed to 2017, but... I mean, end of last it's... year is when I've got sent somewhere and played it um so recar i think that's going to be playable and i think i don't know if you guys remember it was the cinematic trailer with the woman with the dog no i don't it was like a a machine a a mechanical dog with the 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 orb inside then it sort of changed into the big massive robot I think yeah. it's going to surprise everyone, and I think it's going to be like a 2.5D puzzle platformer. 
I really hope not. I think that's what it's going to be. I really hope not. I, I don't even know what you're talking about, so... It's, it's fine. Like, like that's the Kenji in a Fune game. Yeah. And, like, he's already making Mighty Number no. 9. Yeah. like Which has doing, been delayed so many times. Yeah, which I'm, like, already, like, can you get that out already? And, like, that's a 2D uh, platform. And this is, like, an Xbox One exclusive backed by Microsoft. Like, and then they gave such a cinematic trailer, I'm, like... I'd be so shocked if it ended up just being a 2.5D puzzler. That and it was, sounds like, disappointing. Like, it, it had such an amazing trailer. I expected, like, either a narrative-focused game or, like, an open-world game. Like, a 2D puzzle platformer. I feel like a lot of people would be quite disappointed with that. I mean, it might have changed since the original, when it was announced... But from what I gathered off the people, it was a, a side-on sort of view game. So do you reckon they'll go big on their Oculus support, or do you reckon that'll wait until towards the end of the year? I think that's a ways off. That's got to be a wait, because they have to build that new console for it. I mean, they've already got to pitch the Slim, and then they'll wait some time, and then they'll pitch the new console. Right. And I reckon if they pitch the new console... They'll slide in that Oculus is supported, and then they'll go into more detail even further on than that. Yeah. So, I don't know if you guys remember Phantom Dust that was announced a couple of years ago. Yeah. Yeah. And then mm-hmm. they sacked the the team that was making it. They said it was still in development. I thought they cancelled it. I could have sworn Phil Spencer said it wasn't cancelled. It's just been moved. Right. So do you reckon that'll be at E3 or do you reckon the the will just slowly kill it? I think that's just going to die. It's going to die quietly in a corner while no one's looking. That's maybe for the best. <laughs> I, I didn't think it was all that impressive when we did get a look at it. Well, from what I could gather, isn't it like a an action role-playing game with a card battler sort of thing? Something like that, yeah. And I hate card battle games. So... Yeah, I, I bet you do. It had no interest with me whatsoever. So moving from Microsoft, Nintendo, do you reckon Zelda will they'll announce that you'll be able to play as both male and female characters in the game? Sure, why not? <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I don't see why they wouldn't. Yeah, like why would they? Like seriously, why would they hold back that information? Um. Oh, he's got you. No, no, I'm just... It's the <laughs> fact that... No, like, seriously. The, the last Zelda game that was on the 3DS... Which one was that? I don't I don't the, know the much about Zelda games. The could stand on each other with three stacking ones. I, what? You can stand on each other? What? Yeah, it was not very good. Um, but with that one, they introduced a female Link called Linkle. Right. So, Which what what's the point of like changing the name? Just keep it the same name. Just change the gender. It's so they can yeah, sell more like toys. You, Link, you go, hang on, that's a dude's name. It's because they want to sell more Link toys. Link is not an actual person's name in general. So moving on. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> now this is some of that I don't think will happen, but I would love to see it, and that's a Ridge Racer VR. Exclusive to Sony's VR machine. I want that. Because Namco, they are doing Ace Combat 7, was it? That's VR. Wait, what? And they are also doing the Tekken 7 with exclusive VR modes. Wait, what What would you do in Tekken that uses VR? Don't know. First person fighting game? Oh. Or it might just be like, can you remember the Street Fighter for the 3DS? Well, when you went on to the 3D mode, it was like over the shoulder view. Wait, what? I know nothing about this. Oh, it was a launch game for the 3DS called Street Fighter 4. Mm-hmm. Capcom made it. I never heard of them. Who's who's that? <laughs> Don't worry, they'll be bankrupt in a few years. <laughs> I, like, I might uh, believe that. 
Because <laughs> they're fucking up with Street Fighter. Was it, was it five now? Yeah. I, 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 I was so into buying that, and then after I'm not I've, a fighting game guy, so. Um. Not really a fighting game guy, but I do love Street Fighter. Like, I'll go for like a Soul Calibur because like three and up, you're able to like create a character and customize it. Oh, Soul Blade was so good. So. Love that game so much. So rumors are afoot that Sega are going to be announcing a new Sonic the Hedgehog game. Uh, Do you think that's a possibility? Or... Uh, I would, to, to be honest, I think that they would, but it would probably be a bad game. You reckon? I mean, I mean, look at the history of Sonic. There was rumors a couple of years ago that Microsoft were going to pay and make the next Sonic game and have it exclusive for the Xbox One. Why would they do that? Sonic is not popular. No it, one likes Sonic. It is. You look at the... Sonic's s- popular? Sales. You look at sales of the games, they still sell a hell of a lot, even the really Fuck bad ones. me. Really? Yeah. Like even Sonic Boom. To be fair, I oh, think God. Sonic Boom sold not very well, but... Okay. The one before that that was still quite bad, Sonic Worlds, was it? I'm really that surprised. That sold really well. I'm really surprised. So it's it's the name. They just want to get the name. I I guess. So do you reckon this is the year we'll get the announcement and see God of War Four? Yeah, definitely. I really I don't really know. I I seriously think we're gonna see the next iteration. Like we're going to find out. Don't what you the- think? Don't you think that game series has been beaten to death already? No, I mean, I, th- I think if they show up at E3 and they have Kratos killing something, I'm going to have no interest whatsoever. But if they show a Norse god being killed by, you know, some kind of Viking warrior, I will it, it will pique my interest. If they have some Chinese dude fighting some Chinese god, that will pique my interest. Like, I would love, like, an... Like an ancient, um, like an Asian setting for a God okay. of War. Hear, hear me out on this. God <clears throat> of War 4, karting. <laughs> it's a game where you drive a go-kart and you play as Kratos. That did not go where I thought it was going. It's a racing game and you get pickups that are different things like giant dagger on a chain and you use it and it hits your opponent and your opponent is stunned for a few seconds and cannot drive. No. Why not? So, your ukulele is <laughs> now I'm being... I'm sorry? They're now doing like the PR... What game? Ukulele. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you said yokelele. I don't know. I heard yunke. <laughs> <laughs> but the rumors are that I've heard uh, they've signed an exclusive deal with Microsoft. Really? And they're going to allow, on the Xbox One, Banjo to be a playable character. Wait. Uh, weren't these X-Rare guys? Yes, these are the guys that made Banjo-Kazooie. <laughs> so, like... Microsoft, like, just, like, said, hey, you're just basically making another Rare game. Put it on a... <laughs> this is silly. It like, seems sure. Sort of... Like, sure, well, all hey, right. What, what, what if Microsoft went to them and actually was like, hey, man, this is way too similar to Banjo. We're going to sue you. They went, shit. But Microsoft <laughs> went, hey, but... Make Banjo I don't know if they could Xbox. sue them for that. Because it doesn't... There's a lot of similarities. Maybe? Like, I'm not saying, like, maybe they have similar... Like, yes, they do have similarities, but maybe they could sue them for that? I'm not sure. I don't think they can. I don't think so either, Unless though. Unless it infringes on a patent that they've got. Right. Which I don't think you can patent a open-world 3D platformer. No, but I'm sure you could patent a collectathon. Yeah. 
I like. Well, then again, this, this there was other games before that that did that. This news doesn't really interest me because I, I don't like those games because they are just like you have to collect all one hundred pieces of that shit. It's like no, thank you. I don't. I don't want to play. That. So I mean, I'll skip through some of Jordan's predictions because a lot of them we've already sort of gone through. Go ahead. He sort of says that he thinks Cyberpunk 2077 will get a new trailer. Okay. That's now, nice. I don't know about you guys, but I still think Cyberpunk's a good two, three years off. I think that's a ways off. So I think I have to they will hold off on that. I, I mean, feel like could... they might like give an update trailer or something, though. No, I don't. We just got Blood and Wine. Like, oh, I so feel that's, like they they're still they doing that. witchy sort of stuff out there. Yeah, they are. He's also said that Horizon Zero Dawn will get a release date. Mm. Yeah, definitely. But there was also the rumours a few weeks ago that it'd been delayed until next year, so... I don't know about that one. I, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I could see it being moved into early 2017 if they don't think it's going to... They don't think it's going to make the cut. I mean, like, Sony has missed the mark now with so many, like, games like Uncharted, The Order, they've all slipped. And there's one game due to come out towards the end of the year that no one's talking about, and it's one of their biggest franchises. Halo. No. Do you know, Chris? Sorry? Batman. No, one of Sony's biggest franchises. Exclusive franchise. Crash Bandicoot. Yeah. No, Activision on that. <laughs> I know. Uh... No, doesn't Sony own like the first game? No, because it was made by en- 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 Envendi, isn't it? Who they got bought out by Activision. No, I. Vivendi. Vivendi. And also oh, close. Vivendi. <laughs> yeah, no, Vivendi uh, actually does not hold any Activision stuff anymore. Um. But I thought Sony owned the first Crash Bandicoot game. No, they might have published it, but they don't own it. Mm, okay, you could be right. So yeah, so Gran Turismo is the game coming out towards the end of the year. Right. Oh yeah, that's a game series, and that's not the that's not the VR one, right? It is the VR one. Oh okay, but it's one of these games where. It'll have in the corner better with VR. You'll be able to play it as normal, but then you'll be able to put the headset on and just have the in car view. If Didn't you want. they cancel the demo or whatever of that? They said they were cancelling the demo because they had to go to cert on two different games practically the, the demo and the normal game. And they'd have to delay the normal game if they had the demo. Well, the thing is, they're going to delay the normal game anyway because that's it's Gran Turismo. <laughs> It's Gran Turismo. They're going to delay it for like five years. I thought I said that. Well, d- look at the last one. How long was that delayed for? It was no, supposed to come out like... Wasn't it supposed to come out when the PS3 came out? Gran Turismo 7. Or, or, uh, or 5, six. I'm thinking of. I'm sorry. Gran Turismo 6 came out very five. quickly. It But it yeah, did, 5 but like, was delayed like hell. Yeah. Anyway. I don't. I don't know. I'm. I'm afraid that it's going to be delayed for like a like two years or something. <laughs> so Jordan also says Titanfall Two will get a new trailer and gameplay footage. Okay, yeah. I see that happening. Yeah. But yeah, I think that'll. That's almost a given, really, isn't it? Yeah, I, yeah, no. I, I guess so. Yeah. I would be shocked if I didn't say that. Yeah. Would you be shell shocked? <laughs> He's also. He also says that there'll be no mention of Microsoft AR tech, which is augmented reality. Yeah, no, that makes sense because they haven't good. they haven't been talking about it. I mean, to me, I think their glasses are amazing, but they're not really what you call gaming technology. It's more of a business sort of tech. I I guess so. Yeah, like, but the thing is, they haven't been really talking about it. So. Mm. I mean, like, yeah, I see that happening. Then. Come yeah, back no. to me when they've got the technology small enough to just have a contact lens you put in, and it's all built into the contact lens. I mean, it's it's like for what it is, is it is a good size. 
Well, hmm. I mean, I, I've, been, I've been reading about there is some kind of VR tech, which is kind of very high-end, like the best of the best kind of right now. Um, and, like, they don't have a screen. They beam the information into your into actual the, eye. Yeah, beam it into that the back of your eye here. Yeah. dangerous. Oh, well, what, what could go wrong? <laughs> TM. <laughs> I mean, do you know the Microsoft sort of, like, AR uh, glasses? They basically said to the developers... Oh, it's available for developers to get hold of. Each one's three thousand uh, dollars. So I think that's a good few years away before it's commercial technology. Yeah, yeah. I just, uh, it's cool, but nah, I don't. I really, I really don't know. So, Chris, do you want to just go through a couple of your last ones? Yeah, I mean, our circle of one at a time just kind of fell to absolute pieces. I just thought we'd just go through one by one and just... Yeah, no, 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 cool, cool. So I had a couple. Um, first one, a very specific one, uh, Mass Effect Andromeda. They're going to show the first gameplay trailer. And uh, I thought they've already shown some that leaked. No, they haven't. Uh, no gameplay, no gameplay. I thought that was gameplay, but it was no. looking some, down like, shooting things. Very, some very early alpha stuff leaked. It looked just the same. But uh, they haven't shown any official gameplay yet. Mm. So they're going to announce. They're going to show the gameplay trailer, and they're going to announce that you will now be able to play as different alien races rather than just human. I don't know okay. about you guys, but I sort of forget what I've seen that's been announced and what's not announced. <laughs> nope. That's nope. alright then. Yeah, so, just, I think it's just you, man. Yeah, so Mass Effect hasn't been shown. That no one knows. What I it's mean, like. That's fine. like you got like a demo to like Gran Turismo Eight. It was really weird. Yeah, yeah. just miss Seven and Spark completely. Oh yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, next uh, thing, <laughs> I reckon uh, Jack Four will be announced. Yeah, that's um, viable. But it will be announced kind of either... It won't be done by Naughty Dog. It'll be done by someone like like either Sanzaru or someone like Sanzaru. You know, it'll, like be, kind of... it'll be... Maybe. But it, it, I feel like it'll also be just like a passing thing. Like, oh, Jack 4. Yeah, by exactly. The... I don't oh, think oh by be... the way, Jack 4 is... No, gone. look at last it'll year. Be like a, it'll be like a Shinmu 3 where it's like, hey, you guys like wanted this, here it is. That's what I mean. Look at last year where they milked it so much for, like, Shenmue 3 and Final Fantasy 7, where they had nothing to show. And they were like, oh, look at this, look what we're but doing are, in three, three years' now. time. Yeah, but I reckon, I reckon, because Sanzaru proved, I think, that, like, a studio can pass on an IP to fans, and those fans make a pretty solid game. Because Sly Cooper Thieves at the time was not a bad game by any means. So I, I reckon... have not really played a Sly Cooper game. I think, unfortunately, oh. like a lot of games that Sony do, it was released with no marketing and no budget, and it just No, no one, no one talked about it. No one cared, but I thought it was a great game. Yeah, it, it got really good reviews, but no one knew it even came out. Exactly. And I think Wait, Sony... Came out? Sony... <laughs> <laughs> Sony have been doing that a lot. Yeah, and I mean, it ended up on PlayStation Plus, I think, six months later. Mm. Oh, really? Yeah. Huh. Um, oh. Speaking of suck, uh, Sucker Punch... <laughs> uh, my when were we speaking of Sucker Punch? Well, speaking I mean, we're of sucking you <laughs> off... <laughs> Go on. Speaking of Sucker Punch... <laughs> right. Um... My next uh, kind of like prediction thought on E3 prediction. Yeah, I forgot the word prediction for a minute. <laughs> um, I reckon. I reckon all the rumors that are flying around are true. I reckon that Sony like owns the Spider-Man IP. I reckon uh, they license it. Movie sense, in the movie sense, they license it. Um, yeah, and I reckon they have. Got in the Spider Man IP back for consoles. And they are giving it Spider Man 2 2. You were going to make Spider Man Ultimate Spider Man 2.30. Fuck that. I want Spider Man 2 2. I reckon, honestly, with. Like, if there's one thing Sucker Punch can do, it's make 
amazing like games that feel amazing to play and their fluidity and like awesome action in their kind like of Spider-Man weird. 2. They didn't make Spider-Man 2. I know. But Spider-Man 2 2, it has to be a thing. Did anyone enjoy the the old PS1 Spider-Man games cuz I quite enjoyed them? Um I did I mean, I have for the kid or did for it, the or time the they might be quite bad now, but I, th- I remember the oh, time being Oh, they are amazing. bad now, I remember. But, um, so I, you, you can play on the Dreamcast as well. I, I think the liked... Spider-Man movie games were good. The first one was bad on PS2. The Spider-Man, but Spider-Man 2, um, if you couldn't tell, I can't uh, remember. Ult- is Ult- like the best. Yeah. Ultimate <laughs> Spider-Man was like really good. But that wasn't based off the movie, that was based off of... Uh, well, I didn't think we were getting specific in Something. which Spider-Man games we were talking about, just the movie ones or not. Well, you brought up the movie ones. Well, I, David said, like, which one do you think were good? And I said the movie ones were good. Oh. Well, Except Spider-Man... The first one Spider-Man. and the third one were not great. No, the Spider-Man 3 was just bad. Yeah, the second one was pretty fucking good. And then, as I say, Ultimate Spider-Man on PS2 was pretty good, and then I, I hated all the ones on PS3. I had it on GameCube. I um, think Ultimate I, Spider-Man was pretty cool. I liked that too, but it wasn't I wasn't as liked, good as Spider-Man 2. Which was the one where I'd like four playable characters. That was like Shattered Dimensions or something. I quite enjoyed the first 20 minutes like... for the story. It seemed quite interesting. Oh yeah, it was like, that. what was that? That was on 360? Yeah. 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 Multiple Dimensions of Spider-Man. Yeah. Yeah, there's like the what was there? There was like a Spider-Man noir noir character yeah, that played like that. a bad Batman, <laughs> like an evil Batman or like a shitty Batman. No, it was just a really bad that Batman Arkham sort of gameplay sort of thing. You had to sneak oh. up behind people and hit. Oh, them. I thought you meant the character specifically <laughs> played as like a shitty Batman. <laughs> no. Okay. So moving on. All right. Final prediction. Um... I reckon even though Ready at Dawn just announced a new game called Deformer, uh, I reckon they're going to announce the Order 1887. I don't know. I think I think they... <coughs> was, eight, eight, was 1886 like a success? Not really. The thing is, yeah. they've got the engine, they've got the assets. Yeah. Yeah. It was I think, I think ended on a cliffhanger. I they didn't finish had, it yet. They, no, they, they end the game on a cliffhanger. Okay. The story was good. Graphically, I was, was interested. Good. Yeah. The theme and tone they set up is good. It's just missing the actual bloody game. I'm sorry. The graphics were good. Yeah. So I mean, I reckon. Okay. They. I, I know you're trying to. You're trying to bode me there. No, no, I, 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 I kind of was, but like, I, I do agree that the graphics were good. I mean, it, but um, so I can... think, I think Sony, I think Sony turns around and says to them, "Hey, look." You've you've made the world. Here's two years. Make a game. We can't give you any longer. If you're any longer, people are just going to completely lose interest. You know, I the don't only know. I feel. I reckon they give them one more shot, and if the order 1887 isn't a good game, they go. That franchise is done. I feel dumb for buying the 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 special edition with like the Wolver the Wolverine not Wolverine. Where the- will- where yeah the werewolf Wolverine was the fuck the werewolf like statuette thing. Like, I don't know. I like that I enjoyed edition. that. I actually, I actually really enjoyed that game. It was one of my. Favorite oh, games. I like I like it, but I still feel dumb for buying that thing. But I, I I genuinely think they give it another shot and like a game like Until Dawn, they say, look, here's two years, make a sequel. Kind of like, you know, you, I'm you, not... didn't, you didn't prove that you deserve as much time as you want, like Naughty Dog does. I'm not but, saying that's not possible. I'm just saying that I don't think it would be a good game. I reckon they'll make it full screen this time instead of having the <laughs> instead of having like, like only 500 mode. pixels. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know if they can. If all they need to do is kind of like as I say, they've got everything else. They just need to make the game, and if they can fix those little annoying little gameplay things, make it feel more like something like Gears of War, like where like Gears of War just has that little bit more polish in its gameplay. I don't know about you, Chris and George, but... You forgot my name for a second? Yeah, you know, I, I was... Chris uh, was talking about it. I was just going to talk to Chris and I remembered you were still there. Yeah, wow. you, you want to talk to George. I remember, like, 
when the Order 1886 first came out, when I was playing the game, I was like, these people care more about the little bells Letterbox. and things on the walls and than the actual game itself. I know, but think, but think about it. They have everything else. They have all the assets. If they gave them two years, that gives them yeah. two years just to make a game. Like, I agree they don't have with to you. worry about story or graphics. They don't have to worry about assets. Like they've got it all down. I don't care if it looks exactly the same as the original because the original looked great. Don't worry about fixing any of that. Like you say, like they focused on all the small things. You've got that to a T. Leave that. Make a good game. If they can do that in like a year and a half, two years, then I, you know. They can. They could do an Assassin's Creed, you know, where Assassin's Creed One, yeah, some people liked it, some people didn't. It was a bit of a niche game, and then Assassin's okay. Creed Two comes around and they rocked it. You know what I want? Another Motor Storm. That was a good series. That was a good series. It was. The first one Especially- looked amazing, but I thought it was just a bit too hard. Um, it like- was. It was. Yes, I agree, but it was still something. I remember actually playing. Uh, on a PS3 demo kiosk, uh, when the PS3 was like really new, and just like being amazed at what MotorStorm was. I mean, I don't know if what it was called in New Zealand. In the UK, it was just called Sega Rally. Some places, Fuck you. some places called it Sega Rally 2007, Fuck and you. I think in America it's called Sega Rally Revo. It was called, I don't give a shit about your Sega Rally. But on that, it actually had, well, when you went through the mud, you left tire tracks, and if you went through a puddle, the puddle had actually, the liquid had come out of that and fill up the tire tread marks on the track. You want to know a good racing game? Burnout 3. I agree. Do you want to know a bad racing game? Burnout Paradise. (laughs) You want to know an even worse <laughs> racing game? Sega Rally. Oh. oh, I heard Sega Rally. That's a real bad one. <laughs> yeah, it's it's really bad. You know, I could just end the car and finish this myself, you know. I never played Sega Rally. I'm just <laughs> kidding. It just cuts off suddenly, and it's just like, hey, guys, I know like it seems like I cut them off, but actually they just, they, they're just they just being real quiet right now. End uh, of the podcast. If you've listened to any of the old podcasts, I have done that before. Where people are in the middle of talking, it's just, no, nah, I'm sick of you now, bye. Yeah, but you can't hang up on us. So, that's been the Warrant Gaming Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Please visit our website at warrantgaming.co.uk. We are on Patreon at patreon.com slash O-U-G. We've got t-shirts and mugs at bluecyborg.com. Just search 1UP Gaming. Now, from what I can tell, Chris has received his t-shirts. Aye, aye. What colours did you get? Black and grey. Black and grey. I couldn't remember. Are they any good? Absolute shite. (laughs) I like them. Did yours come? Oh, yeah, mine came... Uh, a while ago. Thanks for telling me. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> did you want me to tell you? It, it'd be nice. I like to keep track hey, of... Hey, David. And stuff. Hey, David. <laughs> hey, David. Those shirts came in that you got me. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I got black and blue. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, quarter past two in the morning. It's t- too early for this shit. I'm so- I actually completely forgot to tell you I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm really sorry. So hopefully when we'll be doing more videos, we'll get more team-sponsored stuff on the videos and stuff. Just a- look a bit more professional. Yeah. So... <sighs> i tell you what, I was fine until I just realised what time it is and I was cast off yawning now. Well, end the podcast. That's what I'm trying to do. Okay, well, uh, alright. Thanks for listening. Bye. Thanks for listening, guys. So we've got Amazon links on the website. If you want to order from Amazon, (laughs) please use the links. It gives us a little bit. We're on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch. Just go to our website and it's got the tabs at the top. Just 
click straight onto them. If you want to tweet us, it's at OUG Official. And you want to email us, it's contact at oneupgaming.co.uk. And you can find us on iTunes, just search One Up Gaming or OUG Talks. Please leave feedback and give us some stars, it's always nice. Helps us when people are searching for our podcasts. And I believe that is episode 156. Bong. I'm quite hey. excited to be going to this game show thing next week. I'm quite excited to set up my Vive. I mean, oh, I've what? actually got... I bought myself a little digital voice recorder. It looks like okay. a tiny little thing that's got like a little stereo microphone on the top of it. Okay. So, I might give that a test. Get a little... Is, is the podcast out. over? Yeah, no, oh, okay. I'll should just finish it then. Yeah. Thanks, guys. See you next week. Bye bye. Love ya. What a time to be alive. Hey, guys. Justin here. I just wanted to say that I've been thinking about you. I've been thinking about you a lot. Yes, you in particular, in that way. And I wanted to say, I think you're great. I've always said that about you. And I was wondering if you think we're great. If you could give us a quick rating on iTunes, we'd really appreciate it. It would really, really help us out in that, you know, podcasty sort of way. And if you're feeling particularly festive, perhaps even a little saucy, maybe stop by our Patreon page at www.patreon.com slash O-U-G and see if you can't slip a few bucks our way. After all, every little penny or whatever space money they use in Europe helps out the show. Thanks for listening. O-U-G Gaming will always be free, but... With your support, we can always move forward and always be better.